many of us grew up staring into the night sky, wondering about space. Stokes McMillan did too. As a kid, I grew up wanting to be in the space business. He grew up in the era of Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. Rockets back then were basically big tubes uh, that were symmetrical. Then joined NASA in 1978, just as it was about to try something all new. The space shuttle, on the other hand, was so radical. McMillan worked on the shuttle mission simulator, getting the crew ready for the new vehicle's first trip into space. Those were great days. This photo, it's on the left with a, with a big beard and the cool looking tie, is from the last training before the launch. It's my most, one of my most treasured possessions. Slated to take off on April 10th, a computer glitch delayed STS-1's takeoff until April 12th, 1981. America's first space shuttle. When the shuttle launched, I actually had tears in my eyes. It, it was an absolutely mind-blowing experience. Not just for McMillan. Earlier this month, the NASA Alumni League compared notes about working on that first space shuttle mission. The shuttle was a brand new vehicle. We had this thing up there that just didn't look right. We had the mature judgment of an entire workforce in addressing risk, responsibility, design modification, changes. That work continued from STS-2 all the way to the final space shuttle mission, STS-135 in 2011. The space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. That was a really sad moment. Uh, I couldn't believe that it was over. A year later, so was McMillan's time at NASA. He retired after more than three decades there. I was fortunate enough to live my dream. So if your dreams always launch you right back here like McMillan's did, he says fire up those engines. For NASA and I guess for anyone. Standing for Houston. You might have a wild idea, but go for it. Brandy Smith, KHOU 11 News.